Today we're going to build on some of the skills we learned yesterday when we learned how to do the 3D paper cutout effect. And we're going to use that uh, to create this mountainscape. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You may have already figured out what we're going to do, perhaps by just looking at it, which is cool. Um, that means you're thinking a step ahead, and I like that. Uh, let's start by creating a new space to work in. I'm going to just create a 4x4 space. And we're going to start off with just two layers. We're going to start by creating um, our ellipse, our circle. So if you look back here, we've got this big circle. We've got a big rectangle outside it. So I'm going to create the circle first. I find it a little easier to do. So I'm going to hold my shift button and draw it. Um, and then I'm going to do my best to put it in the center here. Uh, if you're not sure where center is, you can always um, go down to view and say show grid, and then you get a better idea of where center is from that. I'm going to shut that off now, though. Hide grid. All right. I'm going to look at my layers here. I just have one so far, an ellipse. And now I'm going to create a, um, a rectangle for the outside. So I'm going to click there. Uh, a helpful hint, we created a 4x4 four four space. I can literally just click at the top left corner here if I want and say 4x4 four four and say OK, and then it draws that for me. Now you'll see our rectangle is above our ellipse. We're going to change that layer order right now so we can see the ellipse above the rectangle. Um, now I'm going to select both. And just like yesterday, I'm going to go and find my Pathfinder window. Now it's already open here for me, but in case it's not for you, you're going to go to Window and Pathfinder. And we're going to divide these two shapes. And again, what that means is it splits them into their own independent shapes. Um, now we can't move them independently yet, but we need to ungroup them. So we go to Object, Ungroup. And now I have my two separate pieces. I've got my rectangle with a hole in it, and I've got my circle that's the same size. All right, I'm going to click on the rectangle, go to Properties, and I'm going to turn off the stroke. Just set it down to zero here, and it disappears. And I'm going to do the same thing with the circle. OK, um, I'm going to create sort of a sunset mountainscape, and so I'm going to choose sort of an orangey fill for this circle. So I'll go in there and I can choose one of the oranges as a starting point. I can double click over here uh, and sort of play thing with things a little bit if I want to make it a little more uh, deeper red or deeper orange or whatever. I can do that here. All right, next we're going to make the sun. So I'll get my ellipse tool again. Uh, I'm going to hold shift and draw it. Holding shift uh, in Illustrator. Uh, make sure that it maintains a perfect circle shape. I'll move it around. Uh, it's the same color right now as this background, which is a great starting position for us. We'll just double click here and then I can, um, what I'm going to do this time, last time I sort of stepped down um, from the original color towards gray. This time we're, we're going to sort of step up um, from orange into lighter orange and then yellow as we go. So there we go. We've got, or whatever colors you want to choose. You don't have to choose the same colors. All right, so I'm going to move that there. Next, we'll use our pencil tool again. We're going to draw uh, a mountain. Um, now, I'm OK at drawing mountains, maybe freehand, and you might be too. Uh, but you might find it hard. And so if you wanted to, instead of drawing it freehand, you could always throw a rectangle in here in this space. and uh, and then just modify it. So I could throw a rectangle right here and then object, path, add anchor points. And I could just start turning this into a mount with my direct selection tool. Uh, that's one way of doing it as well. So you don't have to do it one way or the other. Whatever way you think makes a mountain that looks better. And finally, I'm going to change its color. So I'm going to double click here again. Uh, it's the same color as the sun right now, so I'll double click. And again, I'm going to pull it up into yellow. So we can see the original color here, and this is the new color. So you can kind of use that as a guide as you're going. All right, so the next mountain scape I will do freehand. I'm going to use the pencil tool. I can push and hold here. It might be your paintbrush tool. You push and hold till you get your pencil tool. 
And then we'll draw a similar but different mountain range here. And I'll use my dropper tool. I'll choose the previous color and then double click and drag it up closer to yellow again. Just a bit at a time. And I could add another mountainscape too if I wanted to. All right, so we've got some mountains. We've got our circle there. I'm going to put a cloud in. I'll use just freehand draw some sort of cloud. There we go. I'm going to color that one white and move it around a bit with my selection tool. All right, I kind of like that it's in front of that mountain. All right. Um, the last thing we're going to do, or sorry, before we do the last thing, we're going to click on layers here. We're going to change our layer order. The very top layer, um, all the layer orders are, are good right now, except for we need our frame, which is this very bottom piece here. I'm going to drag it all the way to the top and you'll see it now frames the outside. And now um, I might move my cloud down a little bit too. I could do something interesting with that by putting it between these two layers potentially. Oops, I moved the wrong thing. This is my cloud. I can move it, but maybe here would look cool. And then I could tuck it kind of between the mountains, which is kind of neat. Okay, lastly, we're gonna add our shadows, effect, stylize, and drop shadow. Uh, these are the settings that I like for this. Um, so we've got an opacity of 50, uh, offset of 0.02, Y offset 0.02, and a blur of 0.07, but you can play around with those and see what looks good on yours. So I'll say, okay. And basically I'm just gonna click every layer and do the same thing for every layer. Oops, effect, sorry, effect, stylize, drop shadow, and it remembers the same settings from the previous one. And okay. Now, if you want to get fancy, you could add some trees in here or, you know, more clouds, things like that, birds, who knows, but uh, lots of fun. It really gives them, um, it really looks like uh, it's three dimensional here on my screen and I quite like the effect. So there you go. Building upon what we learned yesterday.